The general guideline is around one to three days before you can train a muscle again. But the problem with generalization is that it can be outdated and also it's not individualized. But let's look at the mechanism behind it. After training, you need to recover and adapt. And some say that you need to repair muscle damage as well, if there is any, but we will cover that in the future. And your progression is going to be your size and your strength. But the question is, how long do you need to wait for all of these to happen? Do you even need to finish the recovery time? And how do you even know the time of recovery needed for the muscle so you can train it again? We will look at what the science says and my personal experience and my client's experience as well so you can see all three words. And studies are pretty clear on this. As long as volume is equated, it doesn't matter if you are training a muscle once per week or two to seven times per week because it's going to be the same volume. This already means that the one to three days general guideline is flawed because everything is in your programming and your training. But to understand it better, let's look at how much time you need to recover from your actual training and that is going to shed light on everything. I have talked about this many times on my channel in multiple videos, but if you are training close to failure, or let's say all the way to failure, at longer muscle length, so when the muscle is stretched with high volume combined with exercises that are new, novel, and them being compounds are going to produce the longest lasting fatigue. Opposed to that, if you are training nowhere near close to failure and getting no gains, at the short muscle length, so when the muscle is contracted with less volume, an isolated exercise that you are familiar with is going to produce the least amount of fatigue. It is also worth mentioning that a beginner is going to need way more time to recover than someone who is advanced because everything is new for that, but everything is novel. It's a lot of stimulus for that. And muscle soreness is a clear indication that you need to recover. But I don't want you to believe that DOMS, as in delayed onset muscle soreness, has any direct correlation with positive adaptation, as in gaining muscle. Not to mention, it is really easy to get yourself sore. Change up your exercises every day when you train, so you get novel stimulus. Train the muscle that's really susceptible to muscle damage at longer muscle length, so when it's stretched, like your biceps and chest, and really exaggerate the stretch, so you get even more sore. But you should already see the problem with this. You are changing up your exercises every day, so you have no idea if you are progressing on any of them, so that means that you are already hindering your gains, if you are gaining anything at all. You can probably gain some if you are a beginner though. Question is, what if you just change your mesocycle or your program and on the first week you are pretty sore? You can still train. I usually do an explosive test. So that means that if I train my chest and it is pretty sore, I just do three explosive push-up and if I can't perform it or my performance is dropping, I feel fatigued. I need more time to rest. And if I can perform it pretty well, even though I'm sore, that means that I'm fully recovered, or at least recovered enough to train. Repeated bout effect will kick in and almost completely eliminate muscle soreness. And that is a good thing because you can perform quality training days after days in your training program. But this only means one thing. If you look at recovery time as a whole, it can be anything in between one to five days based on your programming and where you are in your training program right now. So you will need more time to rest if you train close proximity to failure all the way to failure with high volume, novel new exercises at longer muscle length and those exercises are even compounds. And you will need less recovery time if you train shy away from failure with less volume, shorter muscle length with familiar exercises that are even isolations. But there comes the problem. It is never black and white. It is always a mix. From my personal experience, most gym goers, the majority of them are under training. So that only means that you can train with high volume, nowhere near close to failure, and grow nothing from your training, yet you still need to recover from that training. The easiest way to track your recovery is with progression. If you can add weights, reps, more control to the lifts you are doing, then you are recovered enough. But if you can't do any of these for days, weeks, months, you need more rest. Also, some muscles 
need way more time to recover than others. For example, your quads after training, they recover almost immediately, but your hamstrings are going to be dead for days and your arms, triceps, biceps, they are going to need way more time to recover. So my recommendation is use less volume and improve your intensity. And once you nail that down, use biofeedback, lifting performance, soreness, overall fatigue. And with that, you will get your individualized recovery time needed to train the muscle again. So this only means one thing. Everything will go down to your training program, the way you train and your genetics. Talk to you in the next one.